It's Monday. Welcome into First Take. Hope you all had a great weekend. Thanks so much for hanging with us alongside Skip Bayless. I'm Molly Karam. Stephen A. Smith is in New York City. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? How y'all doing? I hope y'all had a wonderful weekend. Now, now, wait a minute. I'm back in Bristol, Connecticut, but you got to go back to New York City. How does that work every time? I don't get it. Well, number one, it's really not your home. You're just a transplant. Oh, You're really a visitor. So I'm the native New Yorker. Mm. New Yorkers are always calling yeah. upon me. And last but not least, and I'm sure you will agree with this last part, Mama's here. You know oh, I got to be here. Okay. Mm. Well, the only thing I have to respond to that is, in a few minutes on this show, we get to talk about your New York Yankees. Thank you very much. Whatever. Yeah, let's whatever. Go. Let's go. All right. Let's go. The hair looks Make nice, Stephen. I like yeah. the haircut. All right. We have to get into today a lot of stories here as we recap the weekend for you. As we just mentioned, the Yankees are swept by the Blue Jays in the Bronx. So Stephen A. worried about New York holding on to the AFC East. It appears he isn't. Plus, Michael Jordan has interesting comments about his former coach, Phil Jackson. But first, we begin with the association. Longtime Indiana Pacer Reggie Miller showed loyalty to his former head coach, Larry Bird, on Friday. Miller played played under Bird for three seasons with the Pacers, making two All-Star games during that span. Now, in, a, in an appearance on the Dan Patrick Show, mm. Miller said he would take Bird in his prime over LeBron James in a hypothetical draft. I got to go with Larry Joe. In today's rules, you can't yeah. touch him. Yeah. And Larry, so this is 27, 28-year-old Larry and 27, 28-year-old LeBron, yeah. right? Or is he 30 now, right? 30. Yeah. So 30-year-old Larry, 30-year-old LeBron. <laughs> So Larry if he averaged Joe. 30 back then, you take Larry Joe. Larry Joe uh, <laughs> for the win. Skip, Reggie would take Bird over LeBron. Do you concur, my friend? Stephen A. Smith, I do concur. But obviously, for the record, Reggie Miller was coached by Larry Bird for three years with the Indiana Pacers. So you can argue there was some bias operating there. I can also argue back to him that because Reggie played for Larry Bird, he was forced to study Larry's pro career a little harder, maybe even his Indiana State college career a little harder, to come to a conclusion that he drew. And we know that Reggie Miller's never been shy about having an opinion, and I think that was spoken straight from the heart. I do agree. In a hypothetical draft, that's what they started off with, I I'll take it at any age. You, you can do it at 18 or 22 or 26, 28, or as they finally concluded at age 30, I'm going to take Larry Bird just a little bit over LeBron James. Now, you can argue, oh, LeBron is such a superior athlete, and I will not argue back. But as an all-around basketball player, as a leader, and especially as a clutch shooting difference maker, I'm all about Larry Bird. He was a bad boy. For those of us, those in the, the audience who are just too young to know, bad boy. Better shooter from LeBron at any distance. Three-point shooting, percentage, whatever you want to do, and especially from the free throw line where he often led the league in free throw percentage did Larry Bird. Better rebounder, clearly just a little bigger, uh, had a little more better knack under the basket for acquiring rebounds a la Dennis Rodman as a below the rim six foot nine inch rebounder. I'll give LeBron a slight edge as an assist man, but only a slight edge because Larry Bird had the passing gift. And then we come to defense. I'll give LeBron a slight edge there, but Larry Bird, as you know, Stephen A could wreak havoc on defense to the point that he often led LeBron in the steals category. So I'm going to give Larry a slight balancing edge there. Then we get to leadership, intangibles. They spilled over from Larry Bird, as you well know, because you're old enough to have covered him, which is why Larry Bird has three rings, lost two finals, no shame there, to Magic, Kareem, Worthy, Byron Scott, Michael Cooper, all the rest, Kurt Rambis. LeBron is now two and four in finals and would be one in five if Ray Allen hadn't made the greatest clutch shot I have ever seen in that fateful game six in Miami that I do not want to discuss any further. And finally, in last year's playoffs, this got swept under the carpet. LeBron James had the lowest three-point shooting percentage in the history of the playoffs 
for those who took at least 100 threes. LeBron averaged 5.5 threes through his 20 playoff games last year, wound up with 22.7%, which I thought really hurt his Cavaliers last year. So would Larry Bird have shot 22% from three? No, he wouldn't have. Would he have made a lot of clutch threes? Yes, he would have. Would I take him over LeBron James to start my, my franchise? Yes, I would. And, and I don't think it's even close. Well, let me say this. Um, I think that LeBron James is a superior athlete. I think for the first 45 to 46 minutes of a game, I don't know if there's anybody in the world that you can pick over LeBron James because he's a freak of nature, a physical freak of nature, being the fact that he's 6'8", 250 pounds, locomotive coming at you, capable of not just scoring but also defending and playing on both sides of the ball. Uh, I got to give LeBron credit where credit is due in that regard. But there's no way on earth that I'd pick him over Larry Bird in the clutch. I can tell you that much. Larry Bird was not just a superior shooter from anywhere on the court, just like you highlighted. Not only was he a near 90% shooter from the free throw line, which LeBron could never brag about, but also Larry Bird was Mr. Clutch. When the ball, when the game was on the line, you knew that the ball was going in Larry Bird's hands and there was little to nothing that you could do to stop him because he was that much of a marksman, a marksman of the highest order, one of the most lethal marksmen we've ever seen in the game's history. And then there's another intangible that I'm going to throw out there. And again, you don't want to disrespect the greatness of LeBron because he's the greatest player in the world today. And he's been that for quite the last several years. And he's going to be one of the top 10 players in NBA history when all is said and done because he's already there now. And talent wise, you could say he's top two. But the reason why I also feel the need to side with my man Reggie Miller is because when it, that, that intangible about winning, it is something that LeBron James took years to learn. Even though he just lost in the NBA Finals, I don't hold that against him at all. Kevin Love went down, then Kyrie Irving went down, and I firmly believe if those injuries had not taken place, that the Cleveland Cavaliers would be the NBA champions right now instead of the Golden State Warriors, not to poo-poo them but they're going to have a lot to prove that they weren't fraudulent this season considering all the injuries that were in their face prior, you know, in route to a championship. But when I look at the Cleveland Cavaliers and what LeBron James had to endure, I don't know if anybody could have overcome that, to be quite honest with you. And I just look at it from the standpoint that even though he deserves to be respected and that should not be held against him, what's undeniable, Skip, is that Larry Bird, whatever intangibles LeBron James strived to develop and ultimately did to some degree but is still working on in terms of its completion Larry Bird walked into the NBA with that attitude he walked into the NBA with that gift and there was an accountability factor that came with being on the floor with Larry Bird because there was a certain level of excellence that was expected and there was a certain you know level of dereliction of duty that would not be tolerated We've seen LeBron James tolerate a lot of things throughout the years, trying to fit in, trying to get along, trying to be that, you know, what he thought a leader was supposed to be. Larry Bird never paid any attention to any of that. He was Larry Bird, and he came in there with a level of greatness coming from Indiana State, and he put the basketball world on notice that he was going to be a legend and he was going to be a winner. And anybody that played with him had damn well better adopt that attitude or they were not going to be wearing the same uniform as him. That was Larry Bird. And, and, and we haven't seen that really from LeBron James, to be quite honest with you. So, you know, in terms of leadership, in terms of clutch, in terms of shooting ability and overall championship credentials, not just trophies, but a mentality, Larry Bird gets the nod over LeBron James. But you still can't dismiss the greatness of LeBron James. I must admit... I am shocked that you're not defending LeBron a little harder because I anticipated I you would. I can't. No? Even I though can't. the great Mark Jackson said during the playoffs that he's finally gone to the very end of the limb and he can't help himself anymore. And he said, at small forward, he's got to go with LeBron over Larry Bird. Well, what I'm saying to you is this. I look at it as two separate categories. If, I'm, if I have a team 
and I'm talking about building a team around somebody, it's LeBron. If I'm talking about the 82-game regular season schedule, it's LeBron. If I'm talking about the first 45 minutes of a competition, it's LeBron. But when you talk about money time, whether it's a particular juncture in the season where you're trying to position yourself for the playoffs, or you're talking about the last minutes of a game, or you're talking about the last shot in a game, or you're talking about a game seven, or you're talking about anything that, that indicates clutch, you simply can't pick LeBron over Larry Bird because you can pick almost no one in NBA history over Larry Bird because he was a marksman of the highest order. When it was money time, you knew where the ball was going, and you also knew there was little to nothing that you could do about it. It was just a matter of whether or not Larry Bird was going to make it or miss it. It was not a matter of what he was going to put himself in position to do or what he was going to be capable of doing because he was that big time. He was Larry Bird. I, have to, I can't deny that. I appreciate your candor. I'm not sure LeBron and his camp will appreciate your candor, but I do. And I, I want to throw out that because they, they ended their argument or their back and forth between Dan Patrick and Reggie Miller about age 30, which LeBron is now. If you compare, could we take a quick look at those stats, the age 30 stats between Larry Bird, LeBron James. Larry Bird has got him by three points in, in overall average scoring, th three rebounds a game he's got him by, which is pretty significant. Got him slightly in assists, which surprised me. Field goal percentage is substantial, 52.3 to 48.8. And then finally, that was another year. Larry Bird at 91% led the league in free throw percentage. Well, a couple of things. Number one, uh, to get to your initial point about his crew and LeBron himself, got nothing but love and respect for those brothers. I'm proud of them. I can I really am. But, but, but I don't give a damn how they feel. You ask me an honest question, I'm going to give you an honest answer. They don't cut my check. I don't work for them. Good for you. You know, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I, that, that's just the way it is, and it's going to stay that way. That's number one. Number two, when you look at the stats, what you also have to consider, Skip, is that Larry Bird deserves even more credit when you look at those numbers because the game was played considerably tougher then. It was more physical. You can get up in people. You know, you had the bad boys and everybody else still in the game and being very, very relevant. We all know the, bait, the game of professional basketball in the NBA is called soft as putty right now. You pass gas, you'll get called for a foul. Yep. You touch somebody's fingernails, you might get ejected. I agree. I mean, this it's, 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 it's unbelievable. So the fact that back then it being so tougher and Larry Bird having the quality of teammates that he had in McHale and Dennis Johnson and others, to sit there and put up those kind of numbers is, a, is another testament to his greatness because he was playing in a time where they did not mind sharing the wealth. We know how unselfish he was about sharing the wealth, and yet he was still able to register those kind of numbers. So Larry Bird deserves a whole lot of credit for that. I agree with you. I, I'm guessing that right now about 80% of our viewing audience does not agree with either one of us. Well, that, that, all that means is that they don't know anybody. They don't know. Because we, we, we're you. giving them facts. I would love to pick LeBron uh, if, if he deserved it, but I don't think he deserves it over Bird, over the Larry legend that we watched in terms of what I told you, those 45 minutes, you know, an 82-game schedule. Those, he deserves it in that level. But in terms of clutch, money time, there's no, there's no contest. He's not even in Larry Bird's class, clutch-wise. Right. Not even close. We'll truly compare when it's all said and done because obviously LeBron's career isn't over, but we move